All right, so you guys have posted your questions in. Uh, There's been quite a lot of uh, a lot of questions actually. Really good response. 133 comments as I'm looking at it right now. I don't even know how I'm going to get through all these questions, but I'm going to try and get through them as as best I can. Maybe this is going to take you know several uh, you know episodes to get through. But what I'm going to do now is basically sort by um, top comments, and I'll just get through them as best I can. So all right, so first uh, first comment, first question. But Noah Curl, how many days do you hope to squat consecutively for? Like if you get to a thousand, would you take a rest day? Um, it's a really good question. I've never really thought about it in that way. Kind of, I just, uh, to me, it's more of a kind of philosophy of training. Um, COVID-19 has kind of helped me certainly because we haven't had, you know, any travel as a family or have gone anywhere. So really, I've kind of stayed where I am um, the whole time. Uh, basically, my, my goal with this is to kind of make squatting every day work. Um, I really believe in the concept of, you know, training every day. Uh, I believe in that it can work. Uh, it's just a matter of kind of working out exactly how to, you know, put out certain fires as they come up, if you will, and um, and just go from there. Like, you know, so for the for at least six months of this of this journey has been dealing with a big fire, you know, the, the right hip pain. So... Um, I don't, like if, if I take a rest day, it kind of defeats the purpose of the whole thing. I really want to make it work on the fly. Um, I know traditional kind of wisdom would have you think that, you know, rest days are necessary and you should basically rest and recuperate and go from there. I believe that you can kind of do it on the fly. So it's all relative. Um, so stimulus, recovery, adaptation, the same curve kind of applies to this as well. But the, the kind of relative thing here is the stimulus. How big is the stimulus? If you overreach then obviously you need a couple of days rest to kind of get back to adaptation to recover and adapt um, I feel that I want to prove it to myself and make it work because um, fundamentally I feel you know, coming from a basketball environment where skill is basically the most important thing right you know the ability to shoot the ball dribble um, you know strength with both hands control um, it's all skill kind of related and so the first time I came across you know Matt Perryman and sort of then Ivan Abijev and I thought to myself wow this actually makes sense to my basketball brain like this 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 is this is what it's supposed to be like and so ever since then I've kind of been wondering how I can make it work so if I get to a thousand days that will be fantastic if I get to 500 that will be you know fantastic as well but I do want to see progress I do want to see you know um, how it goes you know ultimately I can get to a point where I don't progress at all I just feel like I haven't had the right opportunity because of all these nagging things that I've had and yeah some of you guys are probably thinking to yourself it's related to the the frequency I don't feel that yet I think squatting uh, brings you lots of um, imbalances and you need to pick uh, exercises volume um, uh, carefully to kind of combat that so uh, there's no like given goal and how many days I want to get to but you know there's a there's a sense of I want to make it work so whatever it takes. What is your favorite exercise? <laughs> uh, that's got 35 likes. Actually, that's my favorite uh, question or comment. I love that. That actually hits the spot. If you could have dinner with four people that are alive, who would they be? I hope Klokov is there. Uh, that's John Johnson asking that. Oh, and the previous question about what's your favorite exercise, that was Brendan Williams. Funny guy, man. I like that. Uh, so John Johnson asks um, four people that are alive. Shot off the bat without even thinking, Michael Jordan. Um, man, I, I basically idolized that guy growing up. Uh, he was a superhero for me. Um, he dominated the sport. Uh, he basically made me want to play basketball. It made me want to think about improving myself um, in every aspect. Uh, the man was a, a basically a, a physical marvel. Um, and his mentality was also, if not more impressive than his physical. Um, this, this attitude of not giving up, um, working harder than everyone else. Um, th those, like, those type of lessons formed me who I am today. Seeing, seeing that, that stuff from him was just incredible. He basically showed you the way of how to succeed in life, whatever endeavor you choose. So Marco Jordan definitely won. Uh, number two, I would have to say Nikola Tesla. Um, one of the greatest minds to ever live. Um, 
I mean, I don't even know if I'll be able to like talk to the guy because he's so so clever. Um, what I would ask him, but I just want to see. I want to ask some silly questions. I just want to see how he goes about thinking. Um, I remember a quote uh, by Albert Einstein. He he got quoted saying like he got asked, you know, um, how does it feel to be the smartest person in the world? Um, and his response was, I don't know. You would have to ask Nikola Tesla. Um, because he's the smartest person in the world. So definitely Nikola Tesla is number one. And, you know, personally, uh, three and four would have to be kind of private things. Um, you know, I've lost some family members over the years, uh, and, and I was a kid, um, so I, I don't really remember much. Um, but I would love to, you know, have some of those people, um, you know, for a conversation, I guess. Uh, that, would be, that would be really good. Um, but I don't know where you guys are getting at. You guys want to have kind of popular people. Um, number three, oh, that's, you know, it's hard, isn't it? Number three would have to be either Ronaldo or Messi. I want to say Ronaldo, although I, I kind of like Messi's play more. I want to say Ronaldo, though, because I feel like Messi is just a natural talent. Um, God's giving gift to the world of football. He really is kind of like the greatest in my eyes. But I want to speak to Ronaldo. I want to have a dinner with Ronaldo because he kind of comes from the same cloth um, as Jordan. I mean, this guy's a workaholic. Um, his play, you know, he's, he's been gifted as well, obviously, but his mentality stands out most to me. You know, the ability to continuously improve, the hunger, to always stay at it. I mean, I love that sort of stuff, man. You know, another guy that kind of fits that bill is Damian Lillard. You know, a guy that's a contemporary, just like Ronaldo. You know, man, I don't know whether you guys are basketball fans or not, man, but do you remember that shot that he hit, man, a few years ago now where, you know, man, like when he hit that shot um, against OKC, Paul George was, was guarding him and he hit that game winner from like, man, he was like 30 feet out, 40 feet out. It seemed like he was 100 feet out. Just hit the shot, walked away, just, you know, not celebrating. People are going ballistic. The whole place is going ballistic and he's just cool, calm. I just love that. I love that mentality. Um, so Ronaldo is number three. And for number four, ooh, number four. Um, I've actually had a friend um, say this to me uh, in the past. Um, I, I'm just thinking about like all the greats, you know, in, 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 in human history like um, Leonidas, you know, like what a, what a, what a beast of a, of, a, of a human being that is. You know, the story behind the 300 and all of that, Spartans and all that. I, I just, I, basically the, the, the moral of, of my dinner here is, is just people who have it up here. I truly feel like success comes from here. You know, your, your, the ability to kind of focus your energy. If you conquer this, man, everything else is going to be there. You know, the ability to get up every morning to train, not have fear, get after it. Like, so all of that stuff is just all mental for me. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I get excited about the mental side. And I guess you guys watching my Sweat Every Day journey, I basically try to portray that. I hope one day, you know, I could have the success of these people, obviously. You know, um, these people are icons of human history, but it's all about mentality for me. So hopefully I've answered that question. Klokov is not on the list, although he could be on the list. Um, I don't really know Klokov all that much, to be honest. Like, I, I, he speaks Russian, so I, I can't really understand. Um, I love, I've kind of idolized him, as, you know, growing up because he's just exactly what I want to be able to do. Um, but yeah, Klokov, I guess, number five. Number five. Um, uh, so Colby T uh, asks, how does squatting every day affect your job? I think nursing would keep you on your feet, so I'd imagine it can get hard. Yeah, it's just like anything, man. Like if when you first start something, it can kind of get you know uh, hard. Um, but that was that, that's all I ever you know basically talk about with squat every day. If you just ease into everything, you'll be fine. You know, you don't have to you know jump into stupid volume day one. So when I first started squatting squatting every day, I just basically worked up worked up to a kind of you know training heavy set, I guess single. Um, and so it wasn't really hard all that much. But you know, certainly now that I've kind of you know progressed. I have days where I just do too much and I go to work. So I have like 5 a.m. sessions and I basically, because I do 12 hour days as well, 
<clears throat> I basically just burn out by three o'clock and it's just like, you know, it's a struggle. Um, but, you know, nursing is, is a, yeah, you are on your feet for a lot of it, um, but it's a fast-paced environment. You know, you kind of just keep going, keep going. And the time flies in ED. Like, it's really, really a, a cool thing about it. It's, just, it's always flying by. So you can get hard sometimes, but it's nothing, nothing crazy. Um, uh, Ian, uh, or is it Lane? I think it's Ian. Uh, Mufarich. Uh, he asks, how should we respond to failure in pursuit of our goals? What's your experience and what has worked for you? Uh, so failure, basically, in my eyes, man, like if, if you're failing at stuff, it's the ultimate sign that you're trying. If you never fail in any aspect of your life, are you really challenging yourself? Um, I don't know if you guys play video games or not. I certainly do. Um, that's, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I played. For the last 10 years, man, I've played a game called Skyrim. Um... I'm one of those guys, I'm stuck like 10 years ago, like I, I know there's really good games now and whatever, but I like Skyrim and I like FIFA, those are the only two games I play. But if you play any sort of games, you kind of, you would appreciate my next point. When, when, when at the start of the game, when everything's hard, when your character, you know, is really weak and you have to really kind of watch yourself, um, that to me is the most fun, because failure is just around the corner. When I get my character kind of... Um, leveled up to like whatever, like high level, and I'm like one shot killing everyone. It's not fun for me. So just like the squatty everyday thing, I have a thing in my brain where it's like, it's really, really hard to work this out. Like it's, it's a puzzle for me. And I've had a lot of fires, I've had to fight, hip pain, predominantly the biggest one. And so the harder something is, the more I want it. And so having a 300 kilo squat is something that's unattainable for a lot of people because a lot of people don't want to put in that effort. I love that stuff. The harder it is, the more I want it. You can't buy this stuff. You can't go to a shop and pick up a, you know, a 300 kilo squat. Um, I'm just thinking about now, you can't buy a jump shot either, but a jump shot can get you everything you want. Uh, you know, one of my best friends um, quoted one of the basketball players, I forget who it is, but you can't buy a jump shot, but a jump shot can get you whatever you want. You can't buy a 300 kilo squat similarly. So I like that stuff. So having failure in your life continuously fuels me. It knows me that, I, that I'm trying to attain something that's really difficult to attain and it's worthwhile. Um, and, uh, and the second part of the question was, uh, what's your experience? What has worked for you? For me, basically, I, I, I've only had just kind of um, with the same mentality. Uh, if something is easy to attain, it's not going to be so, so special. Um, so I, for me, once again, it's a mentality thing. I've always kind of had this mentality. Maybe you, I, I first got exposed to Jordan, you know, getting bounced by the Pistons all the time and then fighting and fighting and finally breaking through. Um, my experience is, is that if it's hard, it's worthwhile. Um, uh, Ken Long, Leong asks um, a few questions. Uh, story, when Ivan was a little boy, uh, where did you grow up? What's your favorite sports and how did you go? How did you get to where you are? So the first part of your question, man, um, I was born in Croatia, um, 32 years ago now. Um, 80, 1989 was when I was born. And if you guys know any, any sort of history from that kind of region of the world, um, in 1991, a civil war started over there, which basically broke up the country that we loved, Yugoslavia. Uh, Yugoslavia doesn't exist anymore. It's now a bunch of states, and it, it keeps, seems to be keep. It keeps getting divided even further and further. Um, so I was born in Croatia. In two years later, when the war started, we had to flee to Serbia. Uh, we lived there for a few years, um, and in 1998 we came to Australia. Uh, over there, man, soccer is like <laughs> everything. You know, you guys that follow sports, you would know that. Yugoslavia, ex-Yugoslavia, relatively small country, Serbia, Croatia, relatively in Bosnia, uh, relatively small countries, yet they produce so much star power in, in, in soccer and also basketball as well. But my first love was soccer, um, watching the World Cups, watching Yugoslavian teams, you know, do quite well. Um, so that was kind of my first exposure. The whole country is just sports, sports, sports. Like it's just, you know. Um, so that was my exposure. I kind of grew up in a sporting environment and, and soccer was my first thing. So footwork um, from, from a very early age through soccer was kind of all right. And then we came to Australia in 1998 as refugees and, uh, you know, people used to say to us all the time that, you know, 
there's no ozone layer here in Australia and uh, you know skin cancers are much higher here than in other parts of the world certainly in, in Europe and so we were kind of the bias to kind of play a sport that's indoors and so my brother you know who's older um, he's just started playing basketball instead of soccer um, so even though we came just from playing soccer over there and so we started playing I just started watching him play, play basketball and one thing led to another I started you know picking it up and playing with boys that are four or five years older than me and before you know it I started playing for a club and then ever since then I just basically played club basketball until the age of probably 20s when I pulled out um, so that's basically kind of a rough idea where I come from in the sporting kind of background um, uh, and then Ken also goes also would love to hear your thoughts on, on the programming versus biomechanics debate the idea that good programming uh, fatigue management is sufficient to prevent injuries even if you do have imbalances or vice versa uh, so program is, is something that I've been kind of battling this is basically the, the story of my life in terms of the squatting programming is everything man um, yin and the yang right I, I kind of started off in this journey and I thought squatting was was basically all you needed to do I quickly learned that that is not it, the case um, and any sort of frequent body movements can bring around imbalances even you know squats and deadlifts which are the best exercises the most compound exercises basically it's a full body exercise for, for both of them but even those exercises need to be balanced with something and you know for the last six months I've kind of had to learn that the hard way uh, initially I kind of ran around the, the hip idea I thought it was all sorts of things eventually I've worked out that um, it's a programming issue if you go too heavy too often and you don't address low, low um, um, weight or high reps um, imbalances could happen because when you're when you're doing you know singles doubles triples fives a lot of tissues are not getting exhausted um, you're basically using the high threshold motor neurons but you're not using the other ones so it's kind of like a balancing act so Program is important because you can't just do heavy and you can't just do light because you're not going to get strong that way. You need to do both. And also, um, you know, rolled up into the same idea, you also need to think about opposing movements. Um, so for the squat, it depends how you squat, really. There's, you know, there's a lot of variation there as well. But if you squat high bar, narrow stance, ATG, you know, the prime movements there are the glutes and, and, the, and the quads. Um, the hamstrings don't really get a look in. Uh, so and we know that deadlifting does a lot of that and also deadlifting does the whole posterior chain really much better than than the squat so you need to do some sort of uh, uh, squat to deadlift kind of ratio recently I've gone from one extreme to the other now I'm of the belief that you know I want to squat a lot and it seems to me that if I squat with light weights or heaps of reps my body feels great but still I'm thinking about the hamstring so I don't think you need to do as much volume for the deadlift right now because the, the squat done properly can do a lot of that stuff, but um, you still need to have some sort of balance between the push and the pull of the lower body. Um, and I do think if you dress, you know, biomechanics in that in that way, you're going to manage your injuries and you're going to kind of put out fires before they become fires, if you know what I mean. So selecting a program is very important. There's a lot more I can say about that, obviously. Um, uh, Shravan R asks how close are you to dunking after all those squats man i haven't played basketball properly in five years man like i think last time i shot a basketball was at a mate's house probably a few months ago but in terms of playing basketball i can't remember at least five years uh the best i ever got was basically if you picture the rim it was like here i could grab the rim comfortably and i was always being like a two-footed jumper i never was kind of good at one takeoff one leg takeoffs so like this so i, I guess like if i kind of got you know running again and got my fitness up back up a little bit maybe i could get a bit higher but certainly i have a lot more horsepower now than i had five years ago so and but also at the same token i'm also heavier five years ago i was probably 80 kilos or something now i'm 94 as of yesterday right so quite heavier so never been able to dunk but maybe with some extra training off jumping i could i could get there uh, matthew winter asks show us your jersey collection Wish I could do it in this video, but it's a lot of them. Basically, I have now 70 jerseys. In the last week, week and a half, two weeks, I've bought uh, 40 jerseys. Um, locally or here, secondhand, uh, Facebook Marketplace. I just started looking around. 
All the jerseys before then were basically bought when I was a teenager, um, basically by my parents. It's really interesting. As I gave up basketball, it's kind of when I became an adult, I guess, and moved away from basketball and uh, never really bought jerseys. Uh, and then when the channel started taking off, my two best friends, uh, they gave me their basketball jerseys. And so I basically had a collection of 30, I think 10, 10 or 15 from me and then 10 or 15 from, from, the, the, from the two of them. So I had about 30 up until two weeks ago and now I've got 70 because I bought like a mass. I, the other day I bought 29 jerseys for very, very cheap. The guy was basically in the same position as me a few months ago where I was like, what am I going to do with these jerseys? They're taking up all this space in my, in my wardrobe and I won't even be using them. Um, so it's a really cool idea that I incorporated them into the YouTube channel. Um, Ryan26, have you considered taking a week uh, or two off from squatting entirely to rest up and again? Yeah, definitely do that. That's one of the things that I always think about. Would I have improved better if, if I had rest days? Um, it's likely a possibility. Um, but, you know, like I said in the previous thing, I'm always kind of saying it. To me, it's also an intellectual thing as well. It's not just about a you know, uh, physical thing, you know, I'm not just chasing a world record here, you know, I want to kind of develop some ideas, learn, study this hobby of mine through experimentation, through controlling variables and all of that. So I'm kind of, I'm not just following a template blindly because the code said so, I'm actually kind of like putting some of these practices, uh, putting, putting, putting some of these concepts into practice and then seeing the variation, you know, what my body responds as. That to me is, is really scientifically intriguing. Like my mind is scientific and I love that stuff, man. So I do wonder about taking days off, absolutely. Um, Albert Souza, uh, hey Vaughn, how much do you weigh and do you ever think about getting or losing weight? Absolutely. So the heaviest I ever got was 90, 98, 99 kilos. That was probably like seven or eight months ago. Um, I was a bit silly. Uh, poor diet and it kind of blew up and this is kind of around the time when I was just doing basically singles and training I wasn't really doing anything other than that it's a bad idea man yeah it was silly so now I'm 94 kilos and you know I got stronger with extra weight but that doesn't excite me man I don't want to be fat 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 and get strong I want to be lean like like a, like a race car man and just be performance because you know I've always said that health is number one and you know if you have heaps of adipose tissue or fat tissue it's not good for you man um, and, you know, I would love to put on lean muscle as well, but there's only so much lean muscle a natural human being can, can handle. Um, so, you know, you can't just add weight that you want. Uh, and then Albert continues, your dedication to the squat is admirable. I'm happy to see you experimenting more with other exercises and not being a minimalist. Wish you the best from Texas. Thank you, Albert, man. Um, appreciate you. Um, yeah, uh, at heart I'm a minimalist, um, you're right, I, I feel like human movement is much more simple than, than we make it out to be, it doesn't have to be so complex, we can kind of break down planes of motion and we can go from there, so squatting is one motion, pulling the deadlift is another motion, push, push pull is upper body, like you don't have to do like every single freaking angle to cover all of your kind of joints, um, that whole functional idea, like I know it's kind of been blown out of proportion, what, what functional training really means. I, I truly believe squat, deadlift, bench press, overhead press, pull up, those five things is all you need really, man. Uh, my trouble has been kind of like prioritizing one and the other. Like I really want to push the, the squat along a little bit. Um, and then uh, kind of when, when I figured that program out, that I could chuck on the deadlift and the squat and, 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 the, and the bench press. So that's kind of been my thing. I'm in the middle of the list. I don't want to do just kind of bodybuilding splits all the time. Um, I really want to make minimalism work. Uh, what kind of programs have you run before the squat every day began? Also, what convinced you to try squat every day? So, man, like I, I'm like most other people, like um, I trained from the age of 20 to about 25, just you know, bro splitting it up with the boys in the gym, just pumping iron, whatever. Just every time you rock up, just exhaust whatever muscle you know is on the menu, and that's it. Go home. No program, no anything. The first program that I punched into that book that I've got in the in the garage, you know, it was like seven years ago now. The first program was the Texas Method, five by five. Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, uh, you know, Friday was like an intensity day. Monday was, if I for correct now, volume. And then the um, Wednesday was like a speed day or something like that. So that, that was kind of my first exposure to programming. I read Practical Programming by Mark Ripito. I read the other one as well. I forget what, what the name of the book is. I've got them all here. Um, uh, that was my first program. I messed around with that a little bit. And then around that time, I kind of got exposed to Matt Perryman, read his book. And I think 
For a month or two, I experimented with the squatting every day, but not really. I was kind of like playing with the idea. Uh, then I tried five through one Wendler for like, same thing for like a month or so. Never really gave any of these a proper go. Um, and then uh, after that, I think I did um, Strong Myths 5 by 5 the app, downloaded the app, did that thing. And during this time, like th those first two years, I kind of just kept reading, kept getting it out, I kept watching, you know, videos on, on the net, trying to work out exactly what's going on. And um, yeah, I basically just messed around with a whole bunch of different ones. But always, I just I always had this inkling that I didn't want to just follow. I wanted to learn why the programming was done in such a way. Um, and then I started learning about the Eastern kind of stuff a little bit more. Then I, then I read Power to the People by Pavel Tatsulin. And then I started thinking about Greece in the Groove. And then ultimately I kind of bumped into Harvin Ebajev, uh, Bros, um, the Max Ada from Juggernaut, like, uh, you know, all these guys kind of like, I kept thinking and, and, and thinking, man, this sounds right. Practicing your skill every day sounds right. Strength is a skill. You know, practice your strength as a skill. And, then, and that's kind of like over the years, it kind of morphed into me kind of taking Grease in the Groove and Arvind Abhijayev into one. So Grease in the Groove aspect is that you're training your move all the time. And Abhijayev uh, is you squat every day. So I took both of them. So it's not complete squat every day like Arvind Abhijayev because I'm not going to fail it. You know, Abhijayev wanted you guys, wanted us to like just fail basically every single day. I don't want to do that. I want to kind of grease the groove. So 80% of your max kind of every day, kind of that kind of thing, or 90%, something like that. So not 100%, so it's kind of, I morphed both of these ideas. But yeah, I think I did a bunch of other ones as well, but that's kind of, quite early on, I kind of got attracted to the squatting every day. Uh, Sahil Patel says, show us your top five jerseys. Oh man, I'm looking at a jersey right now, Jordan Bulls um, home. Kit, you know, Jordan, anything Jordan is, is the best for me, man. Like, psst. you know, I loved Allen Iverson growing up as well. That was the next thing, Kobe. I don't really have favorite jerseys. I got favorite players, but I do like the Toronto Raptors of the 90s, of the uh, the 2000s, like when Vince Carter and Trace McGrady you know, with the Raptor, you know, the big um, logo. I, I love that. That's probably my favorite design. Justin Ewan. Ever thought about pursuing the Olympic weightlifting, uh, Olympic lifts? Uh, I feel like you would appreciate taking side of the sport. Yes. Yes, that, I think that's the sport for me. Um, I just have never had any coaching, um, never had anyone teach me how to lift, and I'm afraid of quick lifts, man. I think it's uh, you know very easy to injure yourself when you're using powerful movements. You know, power lifting is slow lifting, if you will. Um, you can there's a lot more control there with jumping underneath a weight that's coming down on you, man. If if you catch it wrong, it can fall you up like a biscuit, man. Like you can snap your spine like a biscuit. So I'm afraid of that. One day maybe I'll transition it, but I need more time, you know, like you know, working almost full time and family, kids, like it's it's hard to drive to a gym now and, and seek out coaching. Uh, Jay Smith says, what are those demons, if any, that creep up every now and then that's that try to keep you from following your programming goals? Well, the number one thing is, you know, uh, think about where's the progress, man? Get after it. You know. Uh, I'm, you know, the, the, the emotions of not being good enough. Um, I want the results now. Those things are always in my mind. And the other thing is I always think about is I'm running out of time, man. You know, I always have that feeling, you know, like I'm 32. You know, how long is this going to take? Get on with it. Come on, let's push harder. And sometimes I overreach and I hurt myself and whatever, but I always have this time pressure. You know, being a nurse in ED, man, like you see all sorts of shit. You know, guys losing their life in their twenties. You know, so you, you go home, you think about what you're doing. You're like, man, I gotta get on with it now. I have to make the most of my life. Those are the biggest ones, basically. Uh, Freddie Kirk, um, what do you think about the knees of those guys? <laughs> man, every single video that I put out, you know, I get a question about the knees of those guy. It's 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 interesting because kind of around the same time that I started getting more popular. Um, getting some sort of like following on YouTube, he started blowing up big time, you know. Um, and I kind of learnt about it quite early on in the piece, you know, because I, I watch videos as well on, on fitness, on, you know, all the time. Uh, I think he is a, 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 a breath of fresh air. Um, it's not often that you hear people talk about knees over toes as, as even a good thing. He's basically saying that it's a must thing. Um, you know, the exercises that he, that he preaches about, you know, the stronger you are, 
you know, running backwards, the more protected you are going forwards, a lot of this stuff. For me, it just, uh, you know, it's, it's really good if you're a field athlete or an on-court athlete. For me, for my goals, it doesn't really, like a lot of these exercises don't really mean a lot to me because I'm interested in just strength. Um, but if you're thinking about like rehab, rehab, that kind of thing, kind of getting your knees stronger, of course. I still believe, man, that if you have ATG squatting is the best thing for your knees. That's, that's what I think. I think a lot of the th stuff that he does, they're kind of good regressions and progressions. Um, but I think for me, I don't need to go that deep into kind of those exercises. But I think he's a really, you know, a breath of fresh air for the community. Honestly, like I think he's a welcomed sight for me. Uh, nothing Serious uh, says, which language do you speak? Basically, I speak two languages. I speak English, obviously, and I speak Yugoslavia. Yugoslavia doesn't really exist anymore, so it's all broken up into a million different countries. So I guess I speak Serbian, uh, Croatian, Bosnian. Yeah, there's more countries around that region, um, but basically two languages, really. Um, uh, Bloody Reckless says, do you ever do front squats in your training routine? Much love from West Ukraine. Um, thank you, man. Uh, West Ukraine, far, far away land. Um, uh, front squats, yeah. So. Uh, Probably six, seven months ago, I, I did a whole little block of front squats. They were really, really good. Um, ultimately, what stopped me was pain in the shoulder from like, I guess, external rotation of, of the arm. That kind of put me off, but it's really good. It's just, you need to kind of condition yourself, the clavicles to take the, you know, it's kind of an awkward position. You know, uh, I, I probably should do them. Um, it's just, I feel like ATG, high bar squats is kind of everything you need, really. They're, they're kind of like very alike. Um, although I could probably benefit from some, but they're not part of my program at the moment. Um, MK says, uh, what does your diet look like? Um, and he goes, what's your height to weight? My height is 184 centimeters, weight is 94 kilos as of yesterday. My diet, I always get this asked, uh, my diet is just basically whatever the wife cooks, man. Uh, she cooks good, healthy, balanced meals. I don't count, count calories, I don't count on any of this. Um, I feel like if you just eat enough food when you're hungry, you know, and you just see the balanced diet, you're going to be in good stead. Um, on that same token, I don't take any supplements. Um, years, years, years ago, when I was like in my early 20s, and part of the whole bro, you know, split, you know, bodybuilding, I went on whey protein. I even tried creatine for like a, like a week, all this stuff. And then as I kind of matured through my nursing career and I learned what some of these products are, uh, I actually learned that this is actually really bad for me. For instance, creatine breaks down to something called creatinine. Creatinine is a blood test marker that we use for renal function. You're putting stuff in that's not good for your kidneys, basically. So, health is number one, right? Screw that. The weight protein, I think it's a scam, man. How much protein does one need? How much? If you look into it, you realize that a lot of that stuff gets converted into glucose anyway, because you're not absorbing it on, on the point. The good thing about eating meat um, is that it's slowly released as it, it is being digested, so it's more usable. Um, if you just you know down a full protein milkshake, you know that hits you. If you don't have an amino need for those protein amino acids, they just get converted into glucose through the Krebs cycle, and then off you go. I think it's the Krebs cycle from memory, um, and then you become sugar. So it's basically like a sugar drink you're drinking. But anyway, not a lot of thought about diet. Just balance, balance, and health. Chai or Che says, is your goal to become a full-time content creator? If so, how close do you reckon you are to achieving that goal? Oh man, all of this, you know, follow, following on, on YouTube just blew up basically in December. Like I just put up one video, that it's just regular round the mill kind of video and all the attention has been increasing since last three months. Um, I don't even know how, like what it looks like to be full-time content creator. Um, I can tell you right now that I mean you should be spaying me, but it's not it's not sustainable to to live off of at all. You know I can't you know live off of this. So I guess three times the the I guess the fame the the, the traffic on the channel maybe that would kind of get me there. Um, but I'll be uh, I'll be nursing until you know for a very long time. Even if I end up blowing up on YouTube for whatever reason, and um, you know. I earn a bit of money from it. I don't think I'll give up nursing fully. I think nursing is a, it's, man, it, it's, it's, it matures you, man. You see things, you see life, you see misfortunate people, unfortunate people, and uh, it kind of, um, 
it really regulates your 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 scale of life and how lucky we really are so yeah i don't know i don't know when if ever i'm going to be a full-time content creator i would love to train every day though uh, i would love to do that you know fully invest myself into training every day i mean i'll be training twice a day if i if i could um, how can a uh, build bones says how can a beginner to weightlifting implement some of your philosophies given the most resources would recommend something like a three-day full body program putting weight up every session i'm from adelaide as well man and your mentality is absolutely special hey man it's good to know a fellow adelaidean <laughs> uh dude uh so my recommendation for somebody that kind of wants to you know head down this path is that i think it's beneficial for you to kind of be led by some sort of program initially if you're just a beginner because really what i'm doing is auto regulation and to auto regulate you need to have a bit of understanding about you know what your body's telling you and how you're feeling and what are that you know like how do you really know if you got a bit more weight in you or you, should, you know so i think give yourself a six to my to a year kind of experience with five by five or five three one or something like this where you're kind of being led and after a little while, when you kind of realize what's what and, and what periodization is, and even though I'm not really periodizing, you understand a bit more about the body and how it works and how you react to training, then maybe you can kind of venture off yourself and kind of play with your own programming. But initially in the first year, man, newbie game, just smash them out, you know, with, with just any old program. Um, John Smith asks, uh, what do you do for recovery and nutrition to avoid overtraining? Sleep and eat. That's it, man. Um, the overtraining aspect is always relative, right? How much work have you done? Can you recover? If I feel shitty, say today, I'm gonna take an easy day. That's it. Like I'm not married to any sort of strictness. You just whatever. Fully auto-regulated. Uh, the millennial mind asks, "What is your philosophy in lifting that you can carry over in your everyday life?" Best wishes, man. You're an inspiration, Carlo. Thank you, Carlo, man. Appreciate it. Um, philosophies, man, man, I think you can learn a lot about life from the gym. Um, persistence, hard work, failure, um, are the things that come to my mind right away. Uh, you know, if you want success in the gym, man, you're going to have to put that time in. You're going to have to be disciplined. You know, there's nothing, nothing like persistence uh, in life. You need to rock up and train every day. You need to rock up. And the reason why I train every day is because, well, if I have 180, 190 kilos in my back and I squat that for one, or if I take 100 kilos for a set of 20 or 30, everything after that point in my day is just peanuts. It's nothing. Nothing feels as heavy as, as 190 on your back or like a 90% weight on your back. Um, so it just makes you tougher, I think. It makes you more resilient. Um, makes you a, a tougher human being like Mark Ripito says stronger people are harder to kill or something along those lines uh, what's your favorite album or top three albums oh man so I'm a hip-hop rap guy um, Eminem initially 50 Cent uh, Tupac Biggie like all those guys man in terms of albums I'm not really sure but all that kind of stuff man like it's just epic right now I really enjoy listening to Drake um, a lot of Drake, Migos, like, wow, like, that, those are the sounds that I like. In terms of albums, I'm not really sure. Um, Sage uh, Bohr, Bauer, Bau, I think. How do you balance family, work, and exercise, not to mention other hobbies? Um, I'm going to be starting a family soon. Well done, man. I uh, wonder how you all manage, my, how you manage your time. Um, it's hard, man. It, it really is. You just have to make sure you prioritize so for me, if I have a really busy day on any given day with the family or work or whatever, I just get up early. I get up early, 4.30 if I have to, 4 o'clock, you know, and uh, that's what I do. The most unproductive time usually is kind of like after 8 p.m. and to midnight. Um, when I was a single guy, and I would just basically just be on YouTube, be on Instagram or whatever and just waste time. That's a dead time. You should be sleeping. You know, your kids are probably going to be sleeping around that time. You should be sleeping as well and getting up early and getting take care of business. Um, but I just prioritize. Basically, I put, you know, family, wife, you know, one, and then work, and then, 
you only have basically room for one other hobby if you really want to commit to it. And for me, that's weightlifting. I don't really have many other things going on apart from that. So just limit limit what you're doing. Um, uh, Corey Freeman says, do you think uh, you could achieve more if you took one complete day off each week? Um, maybe. Maybe. I mean, that's conventional wisdom, right? Would have you think that. Uh, Rob, uh, do you have a certain diet you follow? No, not really. I've kind of already mentioned that. Um, Sully Sullivan, yes, yes, yes. Finally, thank you so much. <laughs> All good, man. Great work. And one question I have, how many NBA jerseys do you have? 70, man. 70 freaking jerseys now. Yushi, what made you choose nursing? Well, I wasn't all that really good in high school, man. And my, <laughs> my score wasn't really good for all the other stuff. I think I chose human movement, um, physiotherapy as my one and two. And then I think nursing was last. I, I, I kind of put nursing down because my mom was a nurse and I thought it was a good gig. And, um, never really thought I was going to stay around with it, but, you know, uh, fell in love with it, fell in love with, you know, the lessons that, that would give, the, the job would give me and it ultimately good, you know, really good workplace, you know, working with cool people all the time, you know, people like-minded who understand what life is and how short it can be. I think that's kind of what kept me in the, in the, in the ball game. Um, uh, Alex, lol, lol, lol. Favorite thing to do after lifting when you're free and have time off? Oh man, cold shower. I love cold showers and eating food. I'd say that. Jason Hardin, when do you psych? Uh, when did your psyche snap, or and did you start squatting every day, uh, or did it take a while? Oh man, it took a while for me to kind of um, uh, work out squatting every day. It was for me uh, initially, same as a lot of you guys. Like, what the hell are you doing? But then eventually, one step at a time, and I worked it out. Um, uh, or Semech Malai, I'm butchering a lot of these names, I'm sorry guys. Do you have a before and after photo of your leg exercise after a year? I don't, man. I have slim legs and I train my legs every day and my goal is to have bigger legs, uh, but I'm a little discouraged from growing them. Maybe it's because of my bad genetics. Uh, the whole bad genetics thing pisses me off, to be honest with you, man. Like, you don't really know what sort of genetics you have until you push your genetics to the max. So train, don't use that genetic thing. I don't like hearing that. Work hard, work it out. There's no excuses. Work hard. You, everyone can have bigger, whatever. Um, you know, until you've kind of put in 50 hours a week on a given thing, you can't really say for a good amount of time. Then you can't really say you, you know you all got bad genetics. Just stay with it, man. Just keep pushing. Work it out. Uh, Zub Boops says, "What is your favorite Kendrick Lamar album?" I like Kendrick Lamar. I don't know any of his albums. I don't know some of his singles. Mod Huz, what are your goals? For from training every day, performance only or muscle size also. Uh, 300 kilo squat, 300 bench, uh, 300 bench, 300 deadlift and 180 uh, bench. That's kind of my all time goals. Um, it's Brett Need. Uh, what does your daily nutrition plan consist of? Any specific diet that you follow? Not really, like I've already mentioned, just balanced diet, man. Eon, Angelo, Tamayo, what is time? What is a time schedule you have, including squatting, working ED and family time and sleep? Uh, currently second year of my nursing program. Well done, man. And love training. Cheers, man. Uh, what is a time schedule? Man, get up early in the morning, take care of training, and then everything else can fit where it usually fits. I am alone, says, do you have a basketball stories to share? Oh, man. Uh, basketball stories. A lot on top of my head, man. Uh, really good memories. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything right now. But yeah, heaps of... Heaps of uh, Played basketball for 10 years, man. Uh, had some really good success. Um, but yeah. Oh, I'll tell you a story. So I was playing for, well, how do I explain this? I was playing for a men's reserves team here in Adelaide, um, in Forestville. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I was just kind of new to the team. I wasn't all that good, whatever, like, you know, bench warmer kind of thing at the reserves level. And um, I remember we had a player come from the college program in the States. Um, he was kind of like, I guess, 30 years old, but he played college once upon a time, kind of played Europe, and then he came back to us. This dude was 6'10", 6'11", and biggest guy I kind of ever played with. And he set a screen, and uh, I was kind of like running around chasing a, a guy kind of on defense, and I ran into this guy. And it, it was as though I ran into a brick wall. Um, that was kind of the first time that I went, yeah, this basketball thing is not going to work out for me, man. Like, I... 
you know, like I'm not that skilled and certainly not that big. This guy could take like a couple of steps from the free throw line and just like dunk. Like if he's such a big human being. It was the first time I ever kind of played against somebody that was just so massive. Makes you appreciate, makes me appreciate like Alan Iverson, what he used to do, man. Wow, man, what a freaking athlete. Oh, yeah, so that's kind of my basketball story. Uh, William uh, Wilnhide says, what does your wife think about you spending so much time working out every single day and, and uh, has it affected y'all's relationship? She's really supportive. Um, you know, when I met her, she was in, you know, into fitness as well, worked out a lot, so she kind of knows exactly what, what's up. Um, I basically spend maybe two hours every day of training and I try to kind of work around as best I can. Obviously, without her support, none of this would be possible, but yeah, she's a, she's a big part of me squatting every day. Without that, if I didn't have her support, this, this wouldn't be possible. We're good. <laughs> she's really good. Anonymous Anonymous says, uh, how much can you kill, bro? I don't know, man. I, I don't do that stuff. Uh, Deshaun Hardwick, what are your long-term and short-term goals for lifts and do you plan on competing in powerlifting? Well, I already mentioned the long-term goals, 300, 300, and 180, and then do I compete in anything? I don't know, man. Like, powerlifting pisses me off because of the rules. I hate the arching bench presses. Uh, I don't really like the idea of parallel squats, um, and I don't really like sumo, sumo deadlifts. <laughs> I don't really like any of it. I wish just everyone just did the same thing, so it was kind of a measurable thing. There's just so much variation in how people approach things. So, in weightlifting, I'm not skilled in bodybuilding. Well, I don't want to be on drugs, basically, so... Well, for a lot of them, you can say that, can't you? Uh, NW Trail Series. What's your favorite YouTube channel and favorite book that have that helped you progress? My favorite book by far, man. Bible to Tulin's Power to the People. Easy. Oh, and of course, it will be splitting the two, but Matt Perryman's Squat Every Day. By far the most influential things I've ever read. What is your favorite YouTube channel? Oh, man. Favorite YouTube channel. They've kind of changed over the years. Back in the day, man, Elliot Holtz used to be my jam. But it's just changed over the years. I remember those videos that he was standing in the, in the garage in that kind of like gym setup that he had and your Elliot questions. That was kind of the thing back then. Now I watch a lot of Candido HQ, um, John, you know, Johnny Candido, love watching him, really cool content, really you know, humble guy, really genuine, I like watching him. Um, who else do I watch quite regularly? Uh, Pete Rubish, I like watching him. Um, Clarence Kennedy, of course. Clarence, you know, looked after him uh, for a very long time now. But yeah, those are some of the good ones. Um, Wombat says, I have zero dorsiflexion. How do I improve that? My hips have come a long way. I can ATG, but only with raised heels. Man, very, very common uh, question. Uh, so dorsiflexion is something that I've kind of had direct attack. Um, dorsiflexion is it's kind of like hard, man, because if you, if you just, in my experience, if you just attack dorsiflexion and just keep trying and hit the ankles, I feel like you're just spinning your, your wheels in the mud. For me, every single time I've kind of added, added length to my whole posterior chain, glute, hamstring, calves, I've seen better dorsiflexion. Why? Because of this thing called the fascia. It marries all of those muscle groups up. So if you release your glutes, if you release your hamstrings, you're going to have better dorsiflexion. So treating the symptom is not as effective as treating the cause. So I hope that helps. Just try and add length through, you know, your standing reach test, I guess. You know, try and mobilize the hamstrings, try and mobilize and strengthen the hamstring and the glutes. So try and work on that and I think you'll, you'll have better success than just doing the ankle stretches that people recommend. Um, Chai says, how often do you work out your body core? Uh, now it's twice uh, every other day. Um, Rob, what got you into weightlifting? Uh, well, I basically wanted to become a better basketball uh, player. So I joined the gym so I could kind of start squatting and deadlifting so I can jump and sprint harder. And then over time, as basketball wind down, um, weightlifting started picking up because I needed to fill the void with something. I'm always kind of used to working hard at something and that's how weightlifting kind of filled that gap for me. Tommy Federico, uh, have you taken any rest days since starting this whatever day? No, I've never not squatted. Um, I've taken a lot of days, like going to 60% without doubt. Um, Pedado, uh, how is your max vert in basketball playing days compared to now? I don't know what it is now, man, but like I said, I could grab the ring like this. 
Um, Will does workouts. I'm uploading to YouTube every day too. Any tips? Um, any tips? Oh man, try and help somebody. Uh, Will does workouts. So if you if you want to just generally help somebody and release kind of content that somebody gets something out of it other than just entertainment, I think that's the best tip that I can give you. Generally try and help people. Don't just kind of put up videos and be like, oh, look how strong I am and look how muscular and big I am. There's plenty of guys out there to do that. You should generally try and help somebody out so that makes their day a little bit better. Swagger, MC Jagger, uh, what motivates you to stay so consistent? Time. We're running out of time, man. I'm 32. I'm not old, I'm not young, but I feel like I'm running out of time. Nursing as well has had a lot of impact um, on me as a human being, seeing people have, I guess, bad cards in life and I always kind of come home and be like, man, I'm so lucky. Let's make the most of it. Um, uh, road to no neck. Any special plans for day 500? Um, no, man. Uh, a lot of you guys have kind of been saying, you're pumping up the day 500. To me, it's just another day, man. It's another day, just like day 100, just like day 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. It's another day. Continue doing as you are. Long-term goal is what I think about. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. I'm kind of getting tired. <laughs> uh, maybe I'll make a, another uh, Q&A in a few days. There's a lot more questions. I don't know what question I'm up to now, but there's a lot more questions. I hope this helped. I hope you like this kind of format. Um, but yeah, I'll uh, post this now and then uh, keep an eye on the squad every day. 4.95, I think, today is. I'll put that up later on today as well. Cheers, guys. Peace out.